All right, so filming this Monday morning, uh, I had a crazy weekend like we normally do. Taking care of uh, my daughter. I ran 10 miles last night, tried to set a PR, which I believe I did running uh, six minute 51 second miles. What's up guys? Hey Patty, uh, long time no see. I'm um, just filming this, trying to get it down just so it gets archived. Um, here I got about a half hour. Gonna be doing just more uh, Monday morning mobility uh, this week. What that means is kind of like, you know, you do things that might not be the normal for your everyday activity. Um, we have a little bit more time on the weekend sometimes, so maybe we're stiff or achy somewhere that we're not normally stiff and achy. So very general. I'm um, looking at the list of things we got to do. We got a lot of stuff for the thoracic spine and spine, and then we're going to hit the hips a little bit to uh, just, you know, feel a little better, start the week off right, you know. This will be saved to uh, my feed, so feel free to, to circle back. This will probably take us somewhere between, I want to say 15 to 20 minutes or so, and then uh, guess what, I got a client coming in. So um, yeah, so sit back, relax, and enjoy um, <laughs> the uh, Monday morning mobility. We're gonna be starting on our hands and knees and knees and knees and knees and mic, so. All right, here we go. So. Going on our hands and knees, we're just starting with cats and camels. We're gonna make 10 big arches. Our spine comes up like a scared cat, spine goes down like the camel, like the dip between the two uh, camel's humps. Uh, some people call it cat cow. Let's see if I get closer here. Okay, so I like making sure that my toes are tucked underneath. Actually, I'm gonna take my shoes off for this. So tucking my toes underneath, finding all mobility throughout that I can sneak in, especially on my big toes. Uh, I've been running a lot lately over the past six months, eight months. And my feet take a beating, and so I want to make sure that I keep that mobility or extension in my big toes to help me propel and not start to compensate. And if you followed my lives before, you know I'm a terrible counter, but we're doing just 10. Just up and down, real easy. And as always, if something doesn't agree with your body, just take a rest. We don't do things for more than usually about a minute or so on each side. You won't miss much. I just want you to feel good. I don't want you to you know, worry about, oh, this bothers me, this hurts. That's not the point of this. The point is to feel better. So you'll see I'm pushing way up, getting a big arch in my spine up. That's our scared cat. Then I'm dipping down. My shoulder blades are coming together towards each other, pinching my thoracic spine into extension. Great, so did about 10. The next thing we're gonna do is an extended bird dog. And what I mean by that is we have our cat and we have our cow. I want you to stay down in this cow and you're gonna reach one leg back nice and straight. You'll see I'm not reaching up I don't have a bent knee, I have a nice straight leg. My opposite arm goes forward for a brief pause. I maintain the arch. And I reach. Now I'm extending my back because a lot of us spend time, a lot of time in a flexed position in our low back. And so right now I'm putting myself into extension in my low back, but also extension in my hip. So I'm pretty neutral. I'm not trying to reach up because that's going to cause me to compress my low back a little too much. And we're just doing five on each side. So I think we got two more on each side. I'm trying to stay nice and stable. And if reaching with your arm is too much, you can modify it by just reaching one leg back. It's still going to work on your core stability, trunk stability, and your hip stability. I'm going to do one, one more normal one in extension. Okay, now we're going to be moving on to some cobras, feeding even more extension into all of our spine from the lumbar, our lowest level, all the way up into our neck. We're going to do a cobra. So you're going to start on your stomach, you're going to get your hands underneath your uh, shoulders. And the beautiful thing about a cobra, which is pressing up, is that everybody's cobra is different. 
So you can tuck your toes under to get a little bit more mobility in those big toes. And if you need to, you can just push up just a little bit if that's what feels comfortable. Or if you have more mobility in your spine, you can push up all the way. And we're just gonna make 10. But at the top, I want you to look over each shoulder. So right and left. And then coming down. And we push up, look over. Like I said, we're working on this mobility of your entire spine. Your spine goes from the base of your skull to the top of your butt. So we don't want to forget that. We're doing 10 of each. Uh, we're somewhere about four or five. I like to say I'm a physical therapist, not an accountant. Last one. Okay. I'm just gonna tilt this screen down a little bit. Is that there, everybody? Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see me a little bit there. All right, so we're gonna go into a tabletop uh, trunk rotation. Tabletop, if you're not familiar with Pilates, is literally just laying on your back with your legs up and your knees bent. So this is tabletop. So I have my legs together. I don't have them separated. My arms are up to the side, palms up or palms down, does not matter. And we are gonna make 10 rotations to each side as far as you can go without lifting your opposite shoulder. So I'm gonna move my legs over to the left. Watch my right shoulder, so when I come this way, and I go, if I lift my shoulder up, I've gone too far. So this is something we call the self-limiting exercise, where your body tells you how far you can go. So I can go pretty far, but some of you might be a little bit different. Maybe you're limited in your thoracic spine or a tightness in your shoulder, or maybe your low back just doesn't feel very good doing this. And if that's the case, maybe you can try a modification by dropping your feet and you can rock side to side. And this is gonna get you a little bit more hip rotation, which I love. So on the days where I'm addressing more of my hip mobility, I'll actually do this one over the one that we started with. But for those of you who can, let's go legs up today. And we have four more in each direction. Oh, it feels good. And then we're getting into stretching out the front of your hips and more big toe mobility. I can't stress this enough. It's the most underrated joint in our body, I feel. It can really, has the potential to really make other things hurt, other things compensate. I don't know, this is three days, this is four. So I do a lot of big toe mobility for myself, like I said, being a runner. But I got a lot of my clients, oh, good who are always like, Mike, why are you always looking at my feet? It's not a thing I got. But it is important because more often times than not, someone has ankle, knee, or hip pain, and look at their big toe, and they just can't extend it. They just can't get into that extended position. So what we're gonna be doing, we're in a half kneeling position. This is half kneeling, this is tall kneeling, and this is low kneeling, okay? So we're gonna be in a half kneeling position. So we're kneeling down on one, one uh, knee about 90 degrees at all our joints and our legs. Back toes are tucked under. I'm gonna come down like I'm doing a hip flexor stretch and I'm gonna tuck my pelvis and then come up. And this is my starting position. From here, I'm gonna sit back towards my back foot. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna come out of that hip flexing position or hip flexor stretch position. I'm putting a lot of pressure through my big toes, feeling a nice stretch in that first joint. And then I push, and open up the front of my hip. I'm squeezing my butt, I'm getting that stretch. We're gonna do 10 of these on each side. So I sit back, and you sit back as far as you can. If you have some limitations or tightness in your knee, don't go back that far, but shifting your weight back is gonna help you mobilize that big toe, and then pushing forward. At the top, it's important that we don't get into this position where we're really compressing our lumbar spine under load, 
We've done a bunch of that extension already. We'll leave it there. We're just coming up nice and tall. My hair is wild on this Monday. What do we got? Oh, we're doing great on time. I don't know, four more, something like that. And then we're gonna switch sides. So I'm squeezing my butt, opening up the front of my hip, getting that big toe mobility. Two, and this is a great pace. No need to go any faster. You might feel like there might be a little bit too much pressure on that big toe. One more, and good. And we're gonna get to stretching out the front of our hip even more in just a second. We're gonna combine it with a stretch of a bretzel. But for now, we're tucking that other side. Tuck the pelvis into a posterior pelvic tilt to come up so you feel that stretch in your hip flexor. You come out of that stretch and then back into it, squeezing the butt, feeling the hip flexor in the front of your hip lengthen, open up essentially. Maybe undo some of the sitting. There was a lot of great football on yesterday. Maybe some people took the liberty of sitting down and watching that all day. Well, guess what? Now we get to kind of help our bodies out, give it the movement that we're intended to do. You can take these throughout your day. Maybe you say, oh man, this feels pretty good. Maybe you need a break from sitting at your desk every half hour or so. Pop down, throw a pillow down on the ground, 10 of these on each side and get back to what you're doing. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. Two more, opening up that hip, mobilizing that big toe. I'm a little bit tighter on this left side, which actually is surprising, usually it's my right side. I was running pretty hard yesterday afternoon. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, we're gonna address the backs of our hips with a figure four stretch or a pigeon. I kinda wanna leave it up to you, whatever feels best. I typically do the pigeon, so I'm just gonna show you the figure four first, and then I'll get into the pigeon, maybe show you a slight modification I like to have people do, and myself included. Kinda is like a pigeon with a cobra. But the figure four, you're just down on your back, crossing your ankle over your, oh, uh, ankle over your thigh, reaching up and pulling that thigh up towards your chest, and I feel a huge stretch in the back of my hip. Now, you might just say, oh, this is great. I feel, feel wonderful, feel like I'm getting a good stretch in the back of my hip, that's enough. So you can hang out there for a minute, but everybody else, you're gonna bring your leg out in front of you, your opposite leg in back, and I want your chest up. A lot of people do the pigeon pose down here, and they're oh, that feels good on my hip, but once again, you're just rounding your spine. We do a lot of that throughout our day. So why not give ourselves some extension, remind our joints and our spine, our facet joints, that extension exists and it's okay and it's not something we should fear or it's not something that should be a pain generating position, okay? So the more you introduce your body to positions, the more familiar it gets, usually the less aches and pains we feel with those positions. So uh, I also feel like most people get a better stretch in their posterior hip if they're up here, because we're getting all the stretch in your glute and none of the stretch in your low back. It's now, I gotta say this, too. spinal flexion isn't, isn't a bad thing. We don't need to fear it. It's just we do so much of it that we, we should probably expose ourselves to spinal extension a little bit more when we have an opportunity to. If we're prepared to lift things with a flex spine or or you know, do an activity, we shouldn't fear it. It's part of everyday life. Now we're gonna switch sides here and do the other side. Spinal flexion is part of everyday life. We just need to make sure that we're prepared for it. And so it's not like you should go out and try to practice deadlifting with a rounded spine or let your spine round a ton when you're squatting, but just know it does happen. But as long as you gradually progress, a little bit of spinal flexion actually is okay. Like I said, it's needed. Our spines are intended to move that way. A lot of people say, oh, don't let your knees go over your toes. Don't bend your spine when you lift things. There's not much research to back that up. Um, a lot of times, the, the reasons people tell you deadlifting is, is bad for your back is because they have one anecdote of a friend who might have been doing too much, too soon, too often, ill-prepared, bad sleep, bad nutrition, all that stuff. 
Um, but for the most part, lifting and you know lifting heavy things or, or putting yourself in, in precarious positions isn't a problem as long as your spine is ready for it. You know, think of like the Cirque du Soleil guys and all that. They're putting themselves in crazy positions, doing very, very uh, intense activities, flexed, rotated, bent, whatever it is, and they're okay. All right, we've got 10 seconds left here, and then we're moving on to something called a bretzel. A bretzel is kind of like this shotgun technique. If you only have two minutes to do one stretch, it's your bretzel. Your bretzel is going to address your thoracic mobility, your shoulder mobility, your quad flexibility, and your butt flexibility, okay? So for those of you who have not done a bretzel before, you're going to lay down on your side. Now I'm going to talk in terms of top limbs, top limbs, and bottom limbs, okay? So we have the ones on the floor, the bottom limbs. Your top leg is going to come over the top, and your knee is going to go down towards the ground. That's the start. You're going to take your bottom hand and you're going to put it underneath. Okay. We're taking our top hand and we're grabbing our bottom ankle behind us. Right? This is what it looks like a pretzel, but it's named after a guy named Brett. And then you're going to pull that bottom knee back and you're going to rotate your top shoulder back. And that's it. And you should feel a nice quad stretch and then maybe that top hip as well. And the more you breathe into this, the more you can start to rotate back and work on your thoracic mobility. Maybe every big breath in and the big breath out and that breath out, you try to rotate back more. And you're just here for a minute. But think of all the things we're getting. We're stretching a pattern, a pattern of rotation, not just stretching, oh, I'm not just stretching my quad, I'm not just stretching my piriformis, not just doing thoracic mobility, I'm getting it all because I need all of that, all of those characteristics to stretch out into the bretzel. This feels good. I might just stay here all day. And then we're going to actually take our hips through some similar ranges of motion for our last little exercise okay so we're doing mobility and stretching mobility and stretching all that stuff and then the last thing i like to do is always going to be something that uses most or all of the stuff we've done to kind of hit save on that document so our bodies remember all the mobility and flexibility we've used and they're more likely to be able to express it when we go to need it throughout our day so once again we have our bottom hand coming up underneath our top thigh our top hand Reaching back, grabbing the bottom ankle, pulling back. And it's okay to feel a difference on one side than the other. We're not symmetrical beings. You know, a perfect example of that is, you know, your liver is on the right side of your body. You don't have a liver on your left. You got a spleen on the left, but not on the right. You got different sized lungs left and right. So we're not symmetrical. We can't assume that we're going to move symmetrically. It's a nice lofty goal. But we just don't move that way. We have, you know, we're left or right-handed. We do things and we have our preferences one way or another. And that's fine. Just know that if you have a severe limitation in one direction versus the other, maybe it's something you want to address. Or maybe you feel, you know, eight out of ten tightness in your right quad, and only a three out of ten in your left. Well, maybe you should stretch your right, maybe a tiny bit more, or work on your your right quad flexibility a little more. Okay, what do we got? We got about 10 more seconds here. And then we're going to do something called a half kneeling 90-90 switch. And it almost looks like a lunge. I promise, it's not that bad. But it works on big toe mobility, quad flexibility, hip internal and external rotation, even balance, all packaged into one little movement. So, half kneeling, 90-90 switches put us back into this half kneeling position. We talked about it earlier, we have our low kneeling, tall kneeling, half kneeling. And you have your toes tucked under, you're in this half kneeling position, you're going to come up, we're bringing one hip into external rotation, one hip into internal rotation, and then we've switched. And I'm working on the big toe mobility, getting a little 
little quad hip flexor stretch. And then there's all that balance involved with switching. And we're gonna make eight to each side. So I've already done one. You come up, you switch. We got two. And if this is a little much, maybe it's a little advanced, maybe your balance is a little off, all you can do is you can hold on to something and do some reverse lunges, maybe eight on each side, is a great little substitute. So we got two, three, Four, four, and I'm going to say, if you guys have any questions, anything's nagging, anything's aching, please reach out. You know where to find me now on Instagram, but you can also reach out at kineticpotentialpt at gmail.com for any of your questions. I'm also on YouTube, same thing, Kinetic Potential Physical Therapy. Hit me up in my DMs. Shoot me an email, whatever it is. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Maybe on my late nights as we're sleep training our daughter. Whew, okay. So we used all that range of motion, all that mobility that we just worked on for, I don't know, what was that, 20 minutes or so? So uh, this will be saved to my uh, Instagram live feed or Instagram feed. And then I'm going to throw it up on YouTube eventually. It'll probably just be under, you know, the mobility uh, playlist that I have going there. So. Uh, let's see. So let's see. So, ooh, excellent. Thanks everybody for joining. This is a lot of fun. I haven't done one of these in a while. All right. So no questions, but no problem. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you know, like I said, if you ever have any questions, anything's bothering you, I've been putting out content pretty consistently now for almost a year. Uh, chances are you can find what you're looking for there. If not, reach out and I can direct you in the right direction. If not, I'll come up with something that can help you. So thank you for joining me on this Monday. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great week. And eat your vegetables, drink your water, get your sleep, move, and reach out to your loved ones because they are waiting to hear from you. You never know whose day you're going to make. So thanks again, and I'll check in with you guys a little bit later, and I uh, hope all is well. All right.